I'm going to call the meeting to order. Please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ask for a moment of silence, please. Okay, I want to welcome everybody. Everybody's watching or will be watching. If you have your phones, if you put it on silent, I appreciate it. Start with uh, roll call. I'll be starting today. I'm here. Commissioner Doug Smith? Here. Commissioner Stephen? Here. Commissioner Coberson? Here. Commissioner Codd? Here. Okay, before we go any further, there will be an executive session on client privilege at the end of the meeting. Uh, attorney client. On um, public comment, I have Joe. Good morning. Good morning. Joe Herring, Herring Surveying, 315 North 5th Street. Here to comment on the agenda items today. Um, we have a one SUP, and it's coming before you without a, a full-blown site plan just because the purchase of the ground is contingent on the approval of the SUP. Both uh, parties are in the audience today. Uh, I believe it was approved six to zero at the planning commission level. All of these cases were approved six to zero, I believe. Uh, the rezones, two of them are estate planning, the Wilburn one on Douglas Road and the Cavill Edge, uh, just trying to get their ground situated for future. The one, the Cavill Edge one is majority, it's a floodplain, and they have one spot buildable. It's about two and a half acres. Uh, there is a rezone on Dempsey Road, and that one is a little different because it is two five-acre tracks. The rezoning, the two-and-a-half-acre zoning for road frontage purpose only, um, it will remain two five-acre tracks just for the same reason it was planted. There will be no more houses added to this property. But uh, those are the only clarifications. Like I said, planning and zoning. Uh, planning Commission approved them all 6-0. Staff explained them very well. Here to answer any questions on anything during the during the time. Okay, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to administrative <coughs> business. Commissioners, any of y'all have anything you want to report? I had something. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just want to say, you know, there's a lot of people in the north end of the county watching these meetings. So I've had a couple reach out to me asking if we had any success getting the gravel roads in the north end of the county next on the agenda as far as paving roads. And I said, yeah, that's the way this board is moving. Um, I'm trying to find some things in writing. They're asking, well, is there anything in writing yet? And there's really not, but I just thought if I'd bring it up and make it in public comment and public part of this meeting that this board agrees that the next uh, gravel roads that get paved are going to be in the north end of the county. Um, we're pushing to get County Road 30 done and uh, about half a dozen gravel roads in the north end page. So I just want to make sure everybody understands this board's on the same page. Well, it should be something in the minutes. Yeah, and I'm going to dig off that. Uh, that's what I'm having to do. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm having to do is just dig it out of the minutes to find right. stuff in writing. So. Hey, hey, drummer, I've, uh, I've always agreed with you on, <laughs> on, on that. That's where we should be sitting that way, and I'm sure we're going to support that, and I think most of the governing body does. Yeah. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm okay. That's it. Doug, do you have something? Uh, did any commissioner have a chance to read the Kansas Association of Counties newspaper? Not yet. Well, what you got? I don't have a lot, so I've read it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's me too, Doug. Well, uh, it was interesting that the county officials visited Capitol Hill to stress the importance of payment in lieu of taxes. I won't read the whole article. I read it. Oh, <laughs> I read that's it. what you're talking about. Yeah, oh, I read okay. it. Uh, Actually, so I'm calling counties are not there. able to charge property tax on federally owned lands. Uh, it helps local governments uh, with road and bridge maintenance, law enforcement, uh, fire protection, all that. The odd, funny thing is, Congress has fully funded this program since 2008, and we've never seen any of it. It's, and so I got two calls into two of those senators and representatives today. Uh, one I've already talked to, and it's what I thought. So they pay that pilot checks on Department of Interior facilities. 
So if you have a national park, like there's mm-hmm. one up northwest that has 80% of the county is a national park. So there's no way they'd be able to function on a budget with only 20% of their county paying taxes. So the federal government pays them a pilot check in lieu of taxes. Here's a check for the 80% of your county that's tax exempt. But they only do that on Department of Interior facilities because they don't come with a lot of jobs. They don't pay those pilot checks on Department of Defense facilities, which is what we have in Fort Leavenworth. What I've been pushing for, and me and Chad went out to D.C. for a couple years ago, is why do they not pay for Department of Defense? And nobody can really answer that question other than they say, well, you've traded jobs. Department of Defense facilities usually come with a lot of jobs. So you've traded them not paying taxes for supplying jobs to your community. But That's what they say. Some the of these federal lands over national parks and things that bring in tourism. Right. They yeah. Don't bring in a lot of tourism. I don't. I don't agree at all with the difference between DOI and DOD facilities. Because yeah, it says it's, it's not a handout. Hand out. It's simply the federal government paying its share to communities. Yes, which is exactly what I've been pushing about. Leavenworth County's handicapped because thirty-five percent of our valuation is tax exempt. So only 65% of us are paying all the bills Mm -hmm. because we get no pilot check from the federal government for Fort Leavenworth. And and I get it. They supply jobs. We wouldn't be what we are today without the fort. I understand all that. But it does not translate very well in our budget. That's the problem we face every year when we do budgets. Well, when they say it's fully funded, you would think fully funded means everybody. DOD, too. Yeah. So I'm actually talking to, uh, there's one senator on there who's supposed to call me back today, and I'm going to try to figure out if there's anything we can do to push DOD facilities onto that schedule, too. Do you think it would do any good for David to draft us a a letter and start documenting things we're trying to do? David, what do you think about this? Well, commissioners, both this commission and prior commissions have for, quite frankly, decades been looking at the issue of payment in lieu of taxes. And as Commissioner Culbertson uh, referenced, the fact that we have such a substantial portion of the county that is tax exempt, uh, we have contacted our both our local state or whatever assistance they could provide and federal representatives on this issue numerous times. Uh, we could do so again years ago. Leavenworth County was part of a class action lawsuit regarding a payment of lieu payment in lieu of tax issues. As Commissioner Culbertson was correct, the vast majority of those funds that were recovered went to uh, local municipalities that had substantial uh, Bureau of Land Management uh, areas within their counties. Leavenworth County recovered approximately $50 from that lawsuit. Uh, and we can we can pursue it, but... Uh, I, I think, what I'm, I'm thinking, what I'm looking more at is, have we ever put pen to paper so we got documentation so when time comes we continue to ask for this besides just a conversation with them? Commissioner, I believe we have that information. If okay. I can tell you, a couple of years ago, I contacted Fort Drum, well, the county right. up in Upper New York State that Fort Drum is located in. It's approximately the same size as far as the geographic area, the number of active duty personnel on it. Uh, they had experienced great difficulty in getting anything accomplished as far as getting payment in lieu of taxes. Uh, generally, the problem we've encountered is Fort Leavenworth has its own school system up to high school age. It has its own fire department. We do provide ambulance services, but TRICARE reimburses our ambulance service. So uh, the real issue we have is is that the assessed valuation of Fort Leavenworth is exempt from taxation. And while it does provide substantial employment opportunities in the county, it does not, like, for example, Hallmark provides substantial employment opportunities in the county, but it also pays taxes. So that's the scenario we're looking at. Well, we, we could certainly prepare that for the commission to send on to Washington, and we can always see what we can get done. I will say this. Fort Leavenworth itself has been supportive of the county's position on this, but they don't write the check. You know, even if there was a compromise being made that, Sit down. It's still, as Jeff pointed okay. out many times. Yeah, it wouldn't have to be like some of these counties get yeah. when they have yeah. federal parks and stuff. Yeah. Commissioner Smith, one of my favorite legal principles is it never hurts to try. Yeah. So yeah. we can prepare something. Well, I guess we I'm can we can work hard on that after we get our local ad valorem tax back from the state. 
then we can work on the federal government. Keep that in mind, though. I think it's a good good thing you brought up, Doug. Okay, anything else, Doug? No, sir. Any other commissioner? Okay, then we'll go on to consent agenda. Any item need to be pulled from the consent agenda? If not, take a motion. Motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Stevens? Aye. Commissioner Culberson? Aye. Commissioner Collins? Aye. Very good. Moving on to formal board action, consider a motion to approve funding to the American Legion Post 23 in the amount of $8,000. Now, one thing I, I would say to start off with is, <clears throat> while I'm, in, I'm I'm appreciative of all the sporting or academic things that we can do, I thought at budget time we discussed having the city start letting the cities um, for the ones that are more recreational and things like that handle the money, and we'd we'd run it through them. Is that what y'all recall, or is, it, or is I had a nightmare? No, we did. And then also, I didn't know if this was eligible for the alcohol yeah. funds, which I think you apply for in February or March, a youth program. Could you answer that? Well, commissioners, if you look at the correspondence that the American Legion submitted in support of their request, they do reference that it would be for the purpose of sending approximately 10 youths to the Boys State annual program, uh, and that they're asking for support for that. Boys State is long-term project in the state of Kansas has been around for quite some time. Uh, we could check to see if those funds might be available from that source uh, or it'd be from, quite frankly, the general funds of the county. You know, I, I, I talked I to someone. I think we have any general funds. We don't have any. That would have to come from there. I talked to people from American Legion was wanting to come before the board, and I informed them that, you know, for this year, for this coming year, next year, the budget's so tight we can have any. But if there's any funds that are sitting there that can only be used for certain things, as Doug has brought out, then I'd, I'd consider that. But uh, but the other thing is we talked about having competitive teams who get money take care of themselves or run it through their city or account or organization and send it to them. So I didn't know if we wanted to go get off that or do we just want to wait until Mark gets back and have more questions for him on that. Well, I'd just, if, it's the, if there's money, and I think there is money in the alcohol fund, if there's money left in there... Typically, you're supposed to apply for it. We do a public notice, I believe, in February, and we certainly award it in March. Uh, but as far as general fund or anywhere else, we don't have any place to get money. We just want to bring that one back if they check. I yeah. think so. We can we're take back. Us. Okay. Thank you. We just don't have the funds. Yeah, I we mean, just don't have the funds. Well, we can clarify it more next time. Is that all right? Yeah, I, th I think we should uh, see how, if there is any funding okay. left in the alcohol okay. fund. And there is money in there. There is money. Yeah. Right. It wasn't all spent. said it wasn't applied for at the right time, but. And I just want to make sure that if we do find the money to pay them this year, we also send them a letter along with that check saying you're going to have to figure something out for next year <laughs> because we've cut all this type of funding out Ow. of next year's budget. So. Yeah, I'd have to let American Legion win Lansing, too, because I told them there was no funding available because that's what I thought. <coughs> uh, so I'd ask them if, if there is funding made available, I'll make them aware to come through. They can apply for the grants. Right, right. That's exactly what I'm thinking, Mickey. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to let this and go table it? Yep. yep. Do we say no. No, Commissioner, you can table it. Now make inquiry with the county clerk as to the availability of the okay. alcohol funds for this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next item is consider a motion to approve resolution 2022-22 issuing a special use rent for contractors yard for Lentz consolidated rural one located at 21845 147th Street. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Good morning. This is special use permit request for uh, consolidated rural water district number one. It's a contractor yard. It's uh, right along 147th Street. It's directly across the street from the city of Baser. We did send this over, uh, or from Dobbin Lake, we did send this over to the city of Baser. Uh, the planning commission voted 6 to 0 to recommend the approval of this. I'll answer any questions you may have. Uh, public utility. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing. Yeah, and it is, it's a, a small office space, and there is, you know, a contractor's yard associated with it, which is why it requires a special use permit. But I don't have a problem. Staff doesn't have any issues with it. Mr. Senator, I'm probably well, No, I just, you know, public utilities, public utility, yeah. I think there's. 
Yes. They provide water to everybody. Okay, if I can get a motion then. Okay. I move them. We approve resolution 2022-22, issuing a special use permit for a contractor's yard for Lyons or Consolidated Rural Water District Number One, located at 2185 or 8451147th Street. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Willis, uh, go ahead. Just this is forever, right? I mean, yeah. So. Yes, assuming, of course, they abide by their conditions. Well, so right. No reason. To I don't think that. anybody's going to move a water tower. Well, there is an existing water tower. Right. Yeah. This isn't for the water tower. The water tower, this is just for the building that's right. Yeah, for okay. the lay down yard. The water 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 water. Yep. Okay. I'll start roll call. Aye. Right. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Stevens. Aye. Mr. Coberson. Aye. Mr. Cause. Aye. Next item, consider a motion to approve resolution 2022-23, authorizing a rezoning from RR5 to RR2.5, located at 20090 and 20130 Douglas Road. Commissioner, this is a request to rezone uh, two parcels of land from rural residential five to rural residential two and a half acres. The comprehensive plan calls for three units per acre. Um, however, staff... Um, recommended approval of this because it is less dense than the future land use map and the nearest city is located um, quite some distance away so sanitary sewer is unlikely to be available to any uh, in the near term planning commission again voted six to zero to recommend approval of this and i'll answer any questions you may have no nope, i went out and looked at it and i believe the applicant paid to have his road paved uh, so that's a good thing you don't hear that <laughs> we don't see very many people doing that but I agree, Doug. Okay, there's no other questions. I'll take a motion. I move that we approve resolution 2022-23, authorizing rezoning from RR5 to RR2.5, located at 20090 and 20130 Douglas Road. I'll second it. Motion any second. Any more discussion? Aye, Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Stevens. Aye. Commissioner Culberson. Aye. Commissioner Collins. Aye. D, consider a motion to approve resolution 2022-24 authorizing our zone from RR5 to RR2.5 located at 20682 and 0000195th Street. All right. This is obviously a request to rezone a couple parcels of land from rural residential 5 to rural residential 2.5. Um, again, sanitary sewer is not directly available. It's not expected to be available in the near future. Uh, furthermore, a significant portion of this property is located within the floodway and the floodplain. While the comprehensive plan calls for this to be three units per acre, that would be pretty um, irresponsible, honestly, to develop at that sort of density in the floodway. Um, staff, recommend, staff recommended approval. The Planning Commission also recommended approval. And I will answer any questions you may have. I went and looked at it too. The land drops off into the stranger yeah. bottom floodplain. Is so, there anything else? I believe it said they could get one house. Yeah, they're trying to build yeah. one one house. Right. I think it's for a son or a right. Probably the best use for that for now. Any commissioners? Any other? I don't take a motion. I move that we approve resolution 2022-24, authorizing a rezoning from RR5 to RR2.5, located at 20682 and 0000195th Street. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Stephen? Aye. Mr. Coberson? Aye. Mr. Cos. Aye. Let me consider a motion to approve resolution 2022-24. 25, authorizing a rezoning from RR5 to RR2.5, located at 21242 and 21278 Dempsey Road. Uh, this is a request, commissioners, to, re to rezone two parcels of land from RR5 to RR2.5. This does meet the comprehensive plan. Uh, however, the property owners are also attempting to remedy a couple of issues. A building was built too close to the property line. There's a septic system that's being encroached. So uh, while, again, this does meet the zoning Future land use map, it also is going to allow these property owners to fix a couple of pretty significant issues. Um, staff recommended approval, and the commission also recommended approval. So, this can't be a boundary adjustment? No, they're platted lots. Um, also, the zoning district is rural residential five, so each lot has exactly 300 feet of road frontage when it was platted. Um, without rezoning, you can't reduce that road frontage requirement to 200, which is what they need to do. Go around the barn. Um, 
so both lots will remain five acres actually. Uh, they're just one of them is going to have less than 300 feet of road frontage. So two issues there. One, the zoning district currently requires 300 feet of road frontage. And two, you cannot do a boundary line adjustment on flat lots. So we need to rezone it to the two and a half acres, which again needs the comprehensive plan uh, so that we can reduce the road frontage on one of them and there's the flat. So not, nobody's going to lose any acreage. No. Or minimal, anyhow. Okay. And both property owners are in agreement. Um, the other, there was another option that was less desirable than okay. fixing the problem permanently. Yeah, commissioners, these are pretty, lately we pretty much did these, right? Yeah. Which, Lately, this is not that old of a plan. No, it's not that old of a plan. You are correct. Hmm? What? You are correct. The plan itself is fairly new. Okay. So were things broad wrong no. on the plan? No, the plan was fine. septic? No, 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 no. Plan was fine. Everything was fine. The property owner built the building without getting a building permit, then sold the property, and then the new property owners came in and said they wanted to. That's when we discovered some of the no, the plat was fine. So it can't be fixed with a variance? Well, it could be, but but then you're going to have a building that's on somebody else's property or encroaching on it in a septic system. Which we don't particularly want. This is the best option to fix the problem. Because somebody didn't follow the rules. But again, the rezoning in and of itself, like the rezoning is, it meets the comprehensive plan. Uh, you know, we're not asking for any deviations from the comprehensive plan. We're just trying to fix a problem that somebody else created. Most of the time. Anything else? No, sir. Commissioners? No. Entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2022-25 authorizing and rezoning from RR5. R2.5 located at 21242 and 21278 Dency Road. Second. Motion is second. Any more discussion? Aye, Commissioner Smith. Same. Uh, Mr. Stephen. Aye. Mr. Coberson. Aye. Mr. Cause. Aye. Okay. Order one pass. Okay, thank you. All righty. Uh, I think that's all for you, Andy Crystal. Aye. I think so. She's up. I know I always do that when it comes out there. I mean, if you want me to leave, I will. I won't be afraid. I don't want you to leave. I just don't know sometimes that's a hot seat, and I try to get people in and out like that. I'm sorry. We're going to presentation discussions, uh, quarterly reports, planning and zoning. Okay, busy. All right. I will not belabor this. I obviously spent a lot of time up before you all. I think you know, generally speaking, what we are up to. Um, we are, just I'll go over a couple things. Staff has begun the annual renewal uh, review excuse me, of the comprehensive plan. Uh, we do have a couple of items in mind that we're going to bring before our planning commission this evening in a work session uh, about things that do need to be adjusted. They're fairly minor adjustments. We are also uh, looking at several text amendment regulations going forward next year um, that we will discuss with our planning commission this evening. Um, Staff continues to sit on all of the normal Mid-America Regional Council committees. As many of you know, we are approaching funding time, so things have been interesting there. Uh, I think on the final page is probably what everyone is most interested in, and that is development in Lumberland County. There's a chart there showing uh, year-to-date development versus total for 2021. You can see we are, uh, I think we're on pace to be very, very close to what we were last year. As we discussed during my last quarterly report, the last, the, the year before, we saw a lot of growth, a lot of uh, building permits from the county. People were uh, building at a rapid pace for various reasons. Um, I don't think on single family homes, I don't think we're going to hit that mark exactly. I think we are going to be a little bit below. We are pretty late in the building season, but uh, step, still definitely on uh, above trend for what we have been the previous years beforehand. I'll answer any questions that you may have. I have one that's not related to this. I just noticed, and maybe it's because of the change. And I noticed a lot on the Planning Commission, Vote 6-0, it 
instead of having nine or ten or whatever it is our number is now. Is that because we're installing new folks, or is there a reason? I know District 4 will have one coming up next agenda. Is there a reason that we're, those folks are 6 zero? I mean, instead of everyone showing up, so I guess. Sure. Okay. Uh, so we, we, we do have a, a couple of commissioners who have, have not been able to attend every meeting it does seem like um, here lately we are kind of fighting to get a quorum um, so we, you know, we do end up with quorum so that's good I don't I don't uh, is it the new big David Mr. Smith one of those factors is that the chairman of the Planning Commission does not vote unless there's a tie yeah. so while it may appear there are only six members present there are actually seven and what is our number now ten ten so we're still missing a couple out yeah. there. And, and I'm not saying that people have reasons for missing. I get it. I just know the last few ones coming up have been six. And I know we've made some on last week. We made some approves to, for new planning commissions. We'll be doing another one next week, which I know he'll be showing up on a regular basis. So I just wonder if there was any reason why. Yeah, so we, we had to move our September meeting, and there we had a couple commissioners who had pre-existing, okay. you know, they had vacations that they had already I'm, I'm planned. Uh, and then, of course, we unfortunately had... Okay. I just, I just, away, so. just wondered. We could double our pay. Double on that. <laughs> I'm talking about that. Oh, triple, Doug. <laughs> okay, <laughs> triple. Yeah. Okay, any questions? I, 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 okay. I'd like to have a work session in the near future about SUP. I was going to say the same oh, thing. Oh, then you no, go, go ahead. You run with it. <laughs> I've been talking enough this week. Well, I just think that, that because of all of the issues that we seem to have had as of late with special use permits and things that. Um, I think that we might want to consider at this point to do a moratorium on SUPs until we can, amongst ourselves and working with staff and the, the Planning and Zoning Board to figure out how we stop and, and how we have some consistency and how we um, kind of move forward. And, and, and we've got a lot of cases pending, you know, in court. And until we can get some of the decisions that have, you know that are more final, I, j I just think that it would be a good idea if stop being the home. If, yeah, yeah. Until we can kind of get everything settled, because and I think that there's some of the ways that we might be able to accomplish some of that. My opinion is that unless it's like a mom and pop type special use permit that's being requested, like a family owned type thing that they're asking for the special use, that if it's any type of more like having employees and things like that, that they need to find property or a business park or a property that is zoned properly. And, and on, right, yeah, and that, you know, when we do that, the, the people that are um, in those, you know, most mom and pop businesses, they need to live on the premises. That, that just. I, I, think, I think it's a good point. You know, I've, we've been going through two or three, I can think of right now, the right. last year that. Reason our ten, and our intentions always been good in trying to stay above everything, but I think Doug and Nikki are correct. On, it's time to sit down and have a little chat on. Okay, if this is where we're heading, we need to change some rules, or we need to do some things a little different. So I have no problem with the work session. If everybody else is okay. I, I think we need to, we need to discuss some I things before so. we do anything. Right. We need to have a work session. I was just expressing my opinion of some well, of things. I do, I do note that our uh, special use permit number is down from last year. So we're down. Uh, well, I, I, I don't know that a, necessarily a moratorium, like because there are some that are coming through. If a moratorium would mean we completely stop. Right. And I, I think maybe we, I agree with having a work session on it. I think yeah. there's something we can probably tweak, yeah. we can probably tweak to do that because things are getting become. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll get something scheduled with Mark. Yeah, we can do that. And we also, after we uh, have our work session with the Planning Commission, we will have a work session with you all on the Conference of the Land. Yeah, because people so. can always ask for a rezone. They don't have to get a special use permit. And, and I that's, mean, that's what we're going to be forced I'm, to I'm just people. saying that, that there are other alternatives than a special use permit, and that's to request a rezone. That's why I'm just putting it out yeah, there. Yeah, we have a lot of options. I, right. We will definitely talk about those options during the work session. Okay. That's a great idea. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? All right. Thank you, Crystal. Now you're finished with Thank you, Crystal. Thanks, Crystal. I do that every time you come up. It's okay. Okay. You're not great, my <laughs> Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, solid waste. Come on down. <laughs> Good morning, Tammy. Good morning. This is my quarterly report for solid waste. Our customers' intonage is the same as it always is. It's, it's cold and steady. Um, KDHE changed our renewal for our permit of 75 to match our 064 so that they're both due on the same time now. Good. So that's going to make life easier. Yeah. So my December one was auto um, approved until August 1st. So both permits are up to date. Our HHW is back in compliance. Um, us along with everybody else had trouble getting their hazardous waste picked up. And so we were out of compliance, but I notified them right away, and they said everybody is, so we're good, just <laughs> okay. keep track. Um, okay. But we are back in compliance now. My next date for pickup is January, so I'm going to start November 1, trying to get that scheduled, so maybe it'll work out. I'm sure you guys heard about the fire out at the transfer station. Yeah. Um, it was just a brush fire when I got called in on Sunday night it was indicated that they thought maybe somebody intentionally set trash on fire but when I got there the brush pile was all lit up so the, it had burned we had a burn permit for like the month before and we just had those high winds on that Sunday and it just kick started it again so I put a picture there of how um, Buildings and grass came out and cleared that whole area. So if it ever does kick up the wind again and start, then there's nothing around there that's going to burn except for what's in that pile. But they did a real good job. Yeah. And Looks like it. Right away. Yeah. <laughs> Spread it out. Anything else in? Looks like you're in deep thought. Anything else you want to? Looks like you're in deep thought. Yeah, I just want to make sure I covered everything. Okay. So your your contract's coming up? For hauling? Yes. Yes. Um, David is in negotiations. Okay. Um, We're trying to get that ironed out. Okay. Hopefully soon. We don't have to worry about it. How long is that contract for? Or the contract. How long is the contract? A three-year contract. Three-year. Okay. Boy, that would be difficult to come up with a three-year contract with terms with the way the yeah. inflation is. No, no. I mean, no, no. Fuel prices. It's outrageous. It'd be tough. So many unknowns. Yeah, that's why I was wondering what the time limit. Commissioners, any other questions for today? We no, thank you. Thanks. Is, no news is good news. Yeah. 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 Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. And appraiser time. Come on down. Come on, Bob. Morning. Morning, Bob. Uh, we've been busy uh, doing property inspections. Uh, $6,673, which is probably a little 1%. Usually we do this. 20, 25% a year, we end up between buildings and permits, 17% uh, re-inspection, we got to be in property once every six years, although our numbers are down for this year, uh, this year the cycle is our, our lighter year for that, uh, we're almost completely done with that, um, you can see the number 1,649 sales validation, we, have to, we actually have to do more on a, on a sales validation We don't uh, normally, if we on a 17% reinspection, we don't normally re measure the property. Uh, but when it sells, we have a uh, personal property, uh, it's final certification. Uh, we usually certify uh, end, of, end of 
made, uh, and then we have to capture all the changes for boats, and vehicles on and off the tax road. So we do a final certification before tax bills go out. Uh, that number from a year ago uh, increased nine percent, and oil and gas increased six percent. Uh, the, the biggest increase. Personal property increases have been you know, the stuff that's valued at market value. Uh, we use state prescribed uh, you know, blue books, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, for pricing them, and those prices are off dish. People are normally used to seeing those go down. Uh, they did go up this year. So I imagine we'll have some questions come when tax bills come out. Okay. So, um, Number of sales, the number of sales are down some from last year. Uh, they're still you know, at a pretty good rate historically, uh, but uh, you can see the uh, uh, number of sales uh, for the first three quarters compared to the first three quarters of the previous number of years there. So, um, Bob, do you think the 2021 and 2022 is reflecting from the pandemic where it, uh, it was catching up, and now we're going to go back, sort of back to the, like, you think we're going to continue kind of a downward trend? Yeah, I can't tell the future. Interest rates I know that, certainly but... have, have contributed to cluster sales happening, uh, higher interest rates. Uh, the, the prices, as I was going to get to, have not gone down. Um, the, uh, um, so I can't tell what's going to happen in the future. I would I would. I don't think we're going to see a. It looked like maybe there trade. was a pent up demand there, you know, and then. Right. There, there certainly was. Um, but I can't tell what's going to happen. But but this year's still above where it was before. You know. Yeah, I so. mean, if you look historically, we had a run up in 2005, you know, to 2007, and then it went way down. Spent a number of years building back up you know, to about where we did last year. And last year was about equal to 2005. Okay. Thank you. And the interest rate was a lot lower last year than it was in 2005. Yes. It was, you know, you're looking at 2.5% interest rates. So right. Yeah, they're getting that caught up too, aren't they? Fuel <laughs> <laughs> you know? on the market was different than that. That was subprime mortgages. Right. But yeah, this is a little different. If new houses slow down, existing homes are still going to bring top dollar or above asking price. So, uh, we're not seeing as many homes sell for over the asking price or as much over the asking price. Some are still for Not as much as we saw. Cash. Um, but uh, the sales, you see the, the, the average sale prices, uh, county totals up 13% uh, for the first three quarters uh, compared to last year's first three quarters. So uh, it, the sale price has not, through the first three quarters, slowed down any. Um, although we think going forward, we hope uh, the way to the problem, that, that increase will certainly. Um, the uh, uh, number of building permits we have uh, are down, or new homes, it's just new homes, uh, are down a little bit, about 10% uh, from last year. Um, and that kind of reflects the national trend also. Uh, increasing interest rates, increasing costs to build uh, materials, those sorts of things. Um, and the last thing I have here is the state does a, a sales ratio study um, that compares our values to the sale prices of property. This is theirs for the first six months. The first half, they give us one. And they'll give us one at the end. And then at the one at the end, they will trend those sale prices if we have a significant trend. So just the raw numbers. Median ratio you know, for, for residential is 85.8. Um, coefficient dispersion, which measures how much dispersion is in that sample, um, is, a, is a 
11. That's well within state standards. Um, the, uh, most counties in the Northeast region were around this area. They, and they were uh, basically reporting that they were lower, and this is lower than we were last year. So, uh, even though we went up significantly, we're still from the behind. Um, the commercial, uh, I would uh, be a little cautious in, in, in that I put it in there. Um, there's 12 sales, and we haven't screened. Uh, normally, we'd have a screen if they validate because um, some sales include personal property, inventory, business value, those sorts of things that either need to be backed out or it's uh, shouldn't be used. Uh, we haven't done that. Um, but that's at 78. Uh, we did commercial value significantly way also. Um, and, uh, but that is, it, it's a low ratio. Um, uh, but most counties have been low on the commercial side uh, for a few years. Uh, the <coughs> coefficient of dispersion uh, is 27.1. That's a little higher than the standards. Um, it's if you look at uh, if you just took this sample and we were being graded on it, whether we're in compliance or out of compliance, we would not be out of compliance on commercial because if you look at those confidence intervals, one end falls within that that range. Uh, Forty counties for last. year. 40 counties in the state were out of compliance for commercial ratio, out of 105. And some perspective on that. Um, like I said, and, and the, we'll, we'll uh, look at the sales on the commercial, and we'll also, uh, they will also apply a trend to that, too. If we, if we have a trend going forward, they will apply it going backwards. Um, so those median ratios will go up some uh, for the final ratio. Questions. Um, Mr. Weber, have you had any commercial buildings sell for more than asking price? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, it's a little hard to track commercial. Um, you do see a listing price. I haven't. Um, you know, the the uh, residential are so often listed online. Mm -hmm. Just go in and see. And some of the commercial you can, but I okay. haven't. I haven't noticed. We haven't seen a lot of that. Okay. Do we have a shortage of commercial buildings on the market or not? What's that? Do we have a shortage of commercial buildings available for sale or would that be a. We always are dealing thing? with, like I said, that's 12 sales. I mean, we deal with about every year about 17, 15 to 20 sales. About 17 is a pretty good average of what we have. Um, that doesn't, that includes, the issue with commercial is you, you're using that data to try to value all properties. You don't have a lot of data. Um, and also, a sale of a restaurant doesn't tell you how you're doing on a hotel motel. Um, right. Doesn't tell you how you're doing on an industrial. So you can't necessarily apply that and trend all properties, um, all types of properties. For residential, you can do that a lot more. And you have an abundance of information of, of sales. Commercials, always harder. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Bob. Bob. <coughs> All righty. We're going to need an executive session. All right. <clears throat> I move that the board recess for a closed executive meeting for the discussion of pending litigation involving the legal interest of the county as justified by KSA 75-4319B2 for the consultation with legal counsel for the board 
which would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship and that the board resume open meeting at 1015 in the meeting room of the board. Present in the executive meeting will be Commissioner Culverson, Cause, Mike Smith, Doug Smith, and Commissioner Stevens, Senior County Counselor David Van Perry. Second. Motion and second. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Stevens? Aye. Commissioner Culverson? Aye. Commissioner Cons? Aye. All righty. Okay, let the record show the board has returned to regular session at 10.15. No action was taken. No decisions were made. The subject was limited to the legal interest of the county. All righty. We're back in session. Um, we're going to go to commissioners. I'll be starting today. Just a couple things to report. Um, Lansing tonight at the uh, community center downstairs will have an open house on their proposed uh, aquatic center from 6 to 8 for anybody that would like to go receive any information. Also, since the COVID-19, we haven't really been able to do our Angel Falls Trails Festival for quite a while, but now it's in full form. It'll be this Saturday. Uh, that's between St. Francis Church and West Mary on the trail there from 10 to 3 p.m. That's all I have. I had it last year. It wasn't as big as it's going to be. Oh, okay. It's going to be I went last year. Yeah, I did, I did too. Yeah. This time it was a lot larger, like it used to be. And uh, you were gone when Mr. Vandal came and gave his uh, yeah. update. And yeah, I was I very it. informative. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I think they're doing a good job. I think that uh, Lansing needs that. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've always supported it. It's nice to see it back on the scene. Right. Voters are going to do it. Let the voters decide. Yeah. There you go. I just have a base for city council. Okay. All right. Thank you, Doug. Mike? Uh, well, we had uh, the rally with uh, Alberta Leach last week, and I understand they've had some good communication with the sheriff on that. Uh, I think I mentioned I spoke to the Boy Scout troop there in Tonganoxie. Uh, also, I spoke to the women's group at the Cornerstone Church in Tonganoxie about county issues. And uh, I'm doing an interview with Rural Leavenworth, Inc. today. So... Uh, Staying busy, and I also have a call into Sarah Ritter, who's the economic development there at DeSoto, still trying to figure out information about the uh, Panasonic battery plant. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Jeff? I don't have anything. City of Leavenworth meeting last night. Didn't really have anything. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. I uh, did the jet, one of the judges for the uh, Leavenworth High School parade oh, yeah. for homecoming yeah, last, last yeah. week, which yeah. was a lot of fun. And that's it, but tomorrow I've got LCDC, and then Friday Workforce Partnership working on the WIOA um, grant and participate in that. Thank that's you. it for them. Commerce GAC is tomorrow, and GAC for uh, City uh, Chamber of Commerce. Is that tomorrow morning? Is it? Yeah, yeah I think I'm it going. is. Okay. Yeah, okay. no, that's your job now, okay. remember? All right. I didn't know if we were trading. <laughs> no, no, no. We're not back no, and forth no, on no, that no, 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 no. We okay. agree. I got it. Okay. Just so <laughs> you know, I got it. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Stevens. Aye. Mr. Culberson. Aye. Mr. Cause. Aye. We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>